Well, joining me now is Claire Bettison, Douglas East, MHK, and it's year two, of course, as well. Um, to say the least, you probably had one of the more fascinating times because you have had a change of minister, therefore a change of travel, maybe. It, ha has it been like that? Have, have you seen things alter drastically between when you joined the department and where it is now? I don't, I don't think there's been a huge revolutionary change. I think there's uh, certainly been you know, uh, a continuation with a lot of the projects that had already been started and, you know, maybe having someone different creates a different sense of drive around things and certainly I think it's been well reported there was difficulties in terms of personalities and how people... Well, you brought that letter together. business list on last year, weren't you? Of course, yeah, that and, letter. you know, it's been well discussed that there had been personality clashes. I don't think that's anything that's, that's saying that new. Um, I think it was unfortunate because it was a distraction for a department that ill ill needed it really mm -hmm. um, and certainly I feel that we are you know driving towards some of the the change in terms of the integrated care the plans for that um, and the community hubs looking at how we can develop them saying that you know I'm I'm certainly not someone who just thinks oh everything's a bed of roses <laughs> We're all just no. fun. I think there's a you know a lot of work still needs to be done and I think that you know sometimes because of the size maybe of the department, it's difficult to get the message across to enough people and to get those joined up conversations. You're sometimes. still struggling with that then because ev but everyone has said the same thing. There's this slowness of everything. There's yeah. just no go. I don't know if I'm reading that right, but you know, it's, it's, just, it's not as easy as you imagine to get things changed. I think there's lots of individuals who've got the go. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's trying to get everyone on the same page at the same time. And we talk a lot about silo mentality within government and the departments, but actually even on an individual department level, you've got different divisions and everyone's competing. And when you've got a budget pressure in the way that we've seen with Department of Health and Social Care, I think everyone ends up trying to you know, deliver their own services. They're being asked to do that within a reduced cost envelope. And I think that presents challenges. And I think then trying to say to everyone, and we also need to be very innovative and come up with lots of brand new things, and we want you to drive them forward at the same time as making your cuts. Right. I can understand, having been the person on the shop floor, how uh, difficult that is. Are you still in touch with that side of things? I think last year you were still doing a little bit of work, you said, the hospital. Yeah. Is that maintained or does that have to go? Yeah, no, no. I still do about a shift a month is what I need to do just to maintain my registration. I don't want it to interfere with my... So, work as an MHK, but the reality is I want to keep my professional registration. I think that's important. And you have, therefore, the unique position on seeing both sides of the story, right? Yeah, I believe so. And I find it very difficult. Well, <laughs> I think that there's not, uh, you know, with my, my nursing hat on, I always felt there wasn't enough communication with nurses, with uh, allied health professionals, with doctors. And I, I still think that's the case in a lot of cases. Why it, can't you change that? You're in the department. I am in the department, but I'm not the department. You know, I'm, no, no, it's not just me. There's a group of people, and there has to be a, a build-up of um, sort of trust, I suppose, in how we're all working together, what we're trying to do. This is year two, for instance. I mean, will yeah, it, will I, I, I do believe that it can happen, but I think it? there needs to be... Um, how to put it now, I think, you know, we need to all work out exactly what the priorities are. And that's something I've been very much driving for in the department. And I think at the minute we continue in this sort of perpetual cost saving world. You know, we've now got the Jonathan Michaels review, which I think, you know, we're all very hopeful in terms of the output. But in, this, in the background, we're still carrying on with the cost savings within the department. And I think you end up almost getting swamped by the, the detail in terms of cost saving and not being able to focus on some of the very positive stuff that's already happening and we're continuing to try to do because over and above everything, the front page is always a negative story. Yeah. And yet, if you turn to page five or six, you find some really great stuff that's happening. And that must be incredibly uh, demotivating for those people working on the front line but day in, this. day out. But you know this. I do. This. Is Absolutely. It, are, are the staff demoted? Uh, you know, not feeling the best, let's put it that way. Don't yeah, too no There's still pressure. I think very understaffing. Bed shortages or, or staff shortages. Bed shortages. Because I think actually there's been an improvement with the Ramsey having Ramsey District Cottage open with the additional beds there. I think we have now got the bed statistics in the morning. We're confident that actually we are in a good position with our beds. Um, we're, we're still working and something I'm very um, keen on is improving the community offering in terms of having more capacity within the community. So we've got a very good and positive dedicated team in the community to provide nursing care but we need more of that. And so if we're looking to discharge people within the hospital and we want to do that effectively and safely, 
at weekends, towards the end of the day. We need to know there's people there in the community that can pick it up yeah. and troubleshoot. That isn't yeah. yet. How's the staff numbers doing? Are you still staff shortages or are you still using a lot of you know, locums and that sort of thing? There's certainly still a, a much higher use than we'd like of, of locums and banks. My and point. That is yeah. something that... But will that be next year? Will that be the after? I mean... I'd like to say no, but no. I, mean, I can't tell I'm you... I'm, you're going to say you're only a member as well, which is fair enough. No, I'm, I'm putting no, a lot I'm on you only here. only a member because Only a member. It's <laughs> like, but yeah, are you working well with Mr. Ashford, for instance? I mean, how's that, how's that going? David? Yeah, we, I yeah. think we get on very well. I think, you know, we came in together. We're part of our <laughs> little team. But, you know, I think, um, you know, he's fitted in very well. Are we surprised he got the position? But, you know, honestly, when we uh, were sort of discussing who may or Could may not... Could have been you. Have... <laughs> well, you're both new members, aren't you? So. We are both new members, yeah. I think maybe I would have been almost too close to it. And I don't... I think it's helpful me not being in charge. Would you want have the it if you get offered it? No, not at the minute. No? No. I would rather be doing the legwork behind the scenes. Okay. And I think that, you know, that's where I play to my strengths. I want to be able to liaise with the people who are working on the front line and have that open route of communication. And I think that almost the higher up, the more suspicious people <laughs> of you. And I don't want that. You know, I'm old, what, do you ultimately, get I'm a nurse who wants to make a difference. Do you get whistleblowing at all? Do people coming to you directly? With, within with, the hospital yeah because um, you, you you're there yeah. you know these I've had people. people who've come to me with concerns which I've then been able to escalate right. um, through through the appropriate policies and I think that's important that people feel that they have avenues and feel comfortable and confident and that takes time within management because I know myself when you're within something you worry and certainly on a small island basis and we've obviously got the whistleblowing committee which is something that I'm very supportive of because I think when you're working in something like nursing, something like teaching, something that's a relatively you know, limited number of employees on the island, if you go and whistle blow, the word will get out on a small island like this that you went and whistle blew. Mm. And I think it will then have a negative impact, even if people don't intend it to, and it's not conscious. And I think people are very, very uh, aware of that and alert to that. And that's why people are more reluctant sometimes to whistle blow. And I think if we can find solutions to that, that can only be a positive. Okay, abortion. You you seconded the the, the bill. You, there were a lot of amendments in the end made. You, you, this time last year, you thought everything was pretty well. So, so then, yeah. think yeah. Were you surprised in the end there were so many amendments? Are you surprised it's still plodding on? I mean, it's, it's getting there, but it's you know. Yeah, it's getting there, and I would rather it took a little bit longer and was absolutely right. And yeah. you know, I think I've always been very clear on that. When you look at something, you think, yeah, I think we've pretty much got this. Actually, then when you look at it and someone makes a suggestion, I think that's the the beauty of the way that we run our parliament in that we were able to take the evidence within the committee of the whole house we were able to make amendments as we went and really check you know are we on the right page are there some little nuances that maybe changed the intention away from quite what we hope to do um, and we've made some amendments that I think are very positive but are you frustrated on this one then let's try that one because again you probably thought this would all be sorted by now I mean I'm trying to get to how the do you think government's done? How, how, <laughs> how do you think you've done over this last year? Let's not, I'm not asking for your number yet, but do you, do you feel you've done good? Yeah, I think when we look at the number of pieces of legislation that we have successfully brought through and we haven't been putting lots of things into committee, we've been taking the use of the committee of the whole house, we've been able to get additional evidence in to get further information and keep that momentum, I suppose, going to make sure that things pass in a timely manner, but with the appropriate scrutiny. I think when you look at that, I feel very positive okay. actually about a lot of the things we've done. Well, There's always going to be frustration. Sure, sure. I'm under no uh, illusion that everything's going to sail from through. A, from a family, by the way, of politics politicians as such, so you, in yeah. that sense, we'll, let's put that by the way, we do know each other, so I do know that. Yeah. Okay, looking ahead to the next year, what, have you got an eye on any particular prize you want to take up, any challenges, any bills you want to put through yet, was it just rubber stamping other people's stuff or what? No, no, I think, um, you know, I've obviously been involved with the anti-money laundering and the fraud bill, and I think those uh, pieces have, have been very important and seeing the progress. I'm sure there's going to be additional work in terms of money val compliance and making sure that all of our legislation and we've got all our ducks in a row because those things are absolutely critical. Um, so those, you know, that's a, an ongoing process which I'm very keen to support. Um, the assisted dying discussion has obviously come up and with my background working, you know, with intensive care, A&E, nursing homes, hospice, I think that that aligns very much with, with my thoughts and I would be very keen to get involved with that but making sure that it's absolutely 
right. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to go too far, but also I don't want it to not go far enough and to not be able to achieve. And I think that's something that's been discussed. There's been, uh, you know, discussion through the dignity and dying groups. I think. Uh, what exactly would you see again, being your nurse background? What is, in your view, the the, the threshold to assisted dying, if you like? I mean, is it is it a quality of life issue? Is it being signed off by the patient, or, or I mean, where, is it well, is it too big a detail to go into here? Yeah, I, it's a huge piece, yeah. but I think you know, looking at the appropriate safeguards. I mean, we talked a lot with the abortion bill about proper safeguards, and I think that's something that will come again with that. Yeah. Um, looking at how many doctors, psychiatrists you may need to talk to. Yeah. I mean, other and countries are doing this already now, so it's almost are. a question of finding the best practice somewhere else almost. Yeah, yeah, and there's places that have implemented it, there's places that have tried and haven't got as far as they would have hoped yeah. for. And ultimately it's about that, uh, you know, concept of my care and my choice. You know, someone should have the ability to make a decision about their care, an informed decision within the parameters of what is legal and what is safe, and be able to execute that appropriately. And I think that's as politicians what we should be looking to do, is identify where the boundaries lie for that, and do that by taking evidence, because there's people who've lived this situation. And do you think we'll have, this time next year, we'll be talking about a bill that will be in progress or whatever, or do you think it's way off yet? I don't know where time-wise we are with it, but I certainly think it's something that's on the horizon. I'm, you know, I've been reading stories from the island, people who've been through these situations, and you know, it's very much affected them on a personal basis. And I think there is a drive, you know, from yeah. the grassroots. Certainly, people contacted me. Okay, you, back to health, really. We keep bouncing back. <laughs> but is there anything else you'd like to do, by the way? Any other departments you'd like to be in? And if so, I'm going to say, would you like to be the minister? But you kind of batted me off that one already. <laughs> uh, it will happen, probably. I mean, you know, it's, anyway, but what? What department would you like <laughs> if you had a department to work in? Not to be a minister, first of all, just be yeah, you're happy you, where you are? I'm happy where you I am. You're going to say, I'll do what I must do? No, 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 I'm happy where I am. I've always, I feel an affinity with DEFA because when I work through the Eastern Young Farmers and I think, you know, there's a, a huge positive group of young people there trying to make a difference in terms of farming and I think we would be uh, ill-advised not to listen to what they've got to say in the farming community. I think if you look at DOI, I'm incredibly passionate about the the roads and how we invest in them because I think at the minute it's very much a crisis management because the funding isn't there so that you know I think I've got synergies with everything when I look at it and there's bits that I'm interested in but you know absolutely I'd pick up uh, you know what I was given okay. but I'm very very happy in home affairs and health. Okay would you uh, see yourself as a, a career politician now yes? No still no. Still on that thing okay. Yeah. And um, where are we going with numbers, I think, is, is obviously the thing. Oh, no, before that, I'd like to say, how much do you do between government work and uh, your constituency work? I think that's a bad question that was put to yeah, people. Did you answer that one? I did answer oh, it, right. and I gave sort of a sliding scale because it very much depends on the time of year. Hmm. Um, and I was, I was trying to divide it up between the people you get who are constituents and then some people who aren't constituents but either know you or feel that you're more appropriate because they know your background. And I've had quite a number of people where I've picked up the casework and I don't like to sort of say, oh, well, I'm not your constituency MHK and sort of palm people off. I don't think that's right. I think if people have made a call, they want to come to you, then that's because yeah. they want to. So what percentage-ish? Ish. I say between, I think I said 20 to 30. For that constituency? Mark. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. How do you get on working as a team, by the way, with your colleague, Mr. Robert Shaw? Do yeah. you have that a, a friendly thing or is it just purely a work? Thing. I mean, or does it need on, to be any more than that? No, I go on great with Chris Robinshaw, yeah. to be honest. And, you know, we obviously we share an office. We had a lot of uh, sort of camaraderie during the campaign, and we do even now. And we always say we, we enjoy the sparring partners because abortion, we were completely the opposite side of the coin. Um, were you surprised with some of his uh, sort of amendments he was going for? Did that cause no, you any... I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. I think no. at the end of the day, everyone has their angle they're coming from. And... I think that... But he wanted he's, committees, didn't he? That's he long did. grass for a lot of people. Yeah, he did. He did. I think he had some very clear reasons mm -hmm. for why he oh, wanted he, that. Yeah, he said that. I think, you know, I listened to him and he's such an incredible speaker. He presents such a fabulous argument in a, a very controlled and clear manner. And if I could deliver speeches how he does, I'd be delighted. <laughs> okay. Let's finish. <laughs> yeah, we get on very well Fine. and we share constituency work. And, and Let's have some final up. numbers then. Um, you said seven. I think everyone was going to save sevens last year. And uh, you're going to go what this year? For you, yeah, this is you. Yeah, yeah, how you've performed. I, out of ten. I think, again, I would say seven, seven and a half, somewhere around oh, there. We're taking halves this year, so we'll, we'll move you up okay. to 7.5. <laughs> <I mean, laughs> everyone's, everyone's giving themselves a little no, bit more. But no, I four. think... 
you know, I'm, I'm far more confident in being able to manage some of the things that come towards me, certainly with constituency work, not, you know, last year I was spending more time trying to work out who I needed to sure. go to. That I've managed to get far better. I've got sort of my direct dials. I know who to go to to hound about things now. I don't think I asked you any big regrets last year. Do you have anything you wish you had done or had not or made mistakes um, or learned something big that you can actually mention or is it just a learning progress process at the minute? No, you I up think... Um, I think, I suppose, the way that public can perceive things isn't always the way things are. And, you know, because of the nature of what you're doing, I don't want to ever put anyone else in a difficult situation. It can be frustrating when you can't talk. I suppose mm -hmm. that's my only thing. But although it's a regret, it's not something I can influence. It's just, okay. you know. Okay. The government got seven from you last year as, yeah. a, as, a, as a number? I think it's, Still I would seven. stick with seven. So yeah. could do better? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, the group of us who came in, you know, when we came in, we were very much uh, ready, to, raring to go. I think you you almost get distracted by the departments, and that's great in that you're doing your department stuff. But I think you almost get dragged into that silo, and I hate it. Silo, you just use that word. Yeah, so I, but I, I, they you, you worry me, and yeah. I sort of almost feel you get so bogged down with what you're doing, you almost forget to work together. And you know that's one of our biggest benefits there's 12 people who came in and we've got people in every department and actually you know a big focus i think for all of us has to been to bring that back together again um and i think that's natural i think in a group you start off all together you sort of find your feet go out a bit but it's that bringing together i think we're on now and i think that's very important because what i don't want to see is any perpetuating of that because it's something that worries me i think it's a huge barrier to any sort of progression within you know certainly government but in any sort of industry anything is having that silos and people not coming together so i think we need to really work to keep that keep that strong <laughs> Yeah, I get the point. I'm not going to ask her questions. My God, she's still, she's still going.